you requested a tutorial on how I built my dashboard that I recently showed in one of my videos. So let's build it. If you don't remember seeing the dashboard, here's a quick look at what it looks like. This is the central hub of my entire Thrive Apprentice website. If you're not familiar with my setup, I do have my course site on a subdomain and I have my main site at Convology.com. I actually have a video all about that on the channel. You can find it as well as an article. In fact, you can just Google should my course website be on a subdomain uh, and my website should come up with a tutorial on that. Uh, but essentially when somebody logs in, this is what they see. And there's a couple of components of this that I want to point out, and then we're going to jump right in and build it. So on the left hand side, we have our sidebar that has like a navigation. It has a little personalized welcome area, uh, and it has a my course section that only shows the courses that the particular user who's logged in has access to. And then there's two sections up top, one for latest news and then one for upcoming events. So let's dive in and take a look at the components of this behind the scenes, a little bit of digging in on the inside of the page, and then we'll start fresh and build it together. So here's the back end inside of Thrive Architect. I want to show you that it's just a standard page and it is actually every element fully built in Thrive. So that's the first important point. First important point is that uh, the page is a standard page. It has a header on my site that's edited using Thrive Theme Builder. And this is just a standard page template. And this is a background section. Um, nothing special here. There's no magic. It's just all built inside of Thrive Architect. There is one kind of cool component and this I've shown several times on the channel in different iterations. It's using conditional display. So if I click into my background section and you can see this orange little flag here in the upper left uh, where it says dashboard under conditional display, I have two different versions. I have the default display, which is what users see if they are not logged in. This is what shows by default. And then I have a dashboard version, which is what they immediately see when they log in. So let's jump into a blank page and start building this. Let's start with a background section. It's a great way to get started every single time. And let's go ahead and tell it to stop inheriting width from the landing page. Uh, if you have that toggled on and let's say it covers the full screen so that it goes full width. And in this recording, my width is pretty narrow here. I'm constrained to the pixels of the video player, uh, but essentially uh, we're going to stretch as far wide as the monitors will go. I like this full screen effect. So if we look again at the dashboard, I like how it goes right up to the edges or at least really, really close. It kind of just gives a more, I think like an immersive look to the dashboard uh, rather than just kind of everything centered. Um, but the aesthetic is yours to play with. I'm just gonna show you some techniques here that I'm using and then you can decide uh, what you wanna use for yours. Inside of our background section, we also have a set of columns. Columns are what's going to dictate uh, in a two by two column here. It's gonna dictate the sidebar because this is not actually a sidebar. So maybe this is pulling back the curtain on the design a little bit. This is actually just a column, not a sidebar. Um, I actually really don't like sidebars on pages because sidebars uh, just due to the nature of uh, how they work, right? They often collapse down to the bottom and Anyway, not a sidebar. So for our column here, we're going to shrink this so that it's not 50-50. We're gonna shrink this down a little bit smaller. And here's a little tip. If, if you have a hard time sometimes landing on the exact number that you want to land on, while you're dragging and scrolling the, the width of the columns, if you hold control, you can actually uh, see that you jump by 5% at a time. So a little cool trick uh, that I picked up. Uh, I don't know what it is on a Mac, it might be command. Uh, probably is command. So there we go, we're at 25%. Uh, that looks good for right now. And again, 25% is relative, right? If I close the sidebar, 25% looks a little bit bigger uh, than it does with the sidebar expanded. So it'll expand to 25% of the total viewable area. Let's go ahead and get rid of our gutter width. Instead of 15 pixels, we'll make our two columns touch side by side. That works for us pretty well. And inside of our background section, let's add a background style and let's add a bluish color. There we go, kind of give some distinction on the page between white and gray. And let's go inside of our columns, uh, go to layout and position. Let's just remove all the extra padding. Uh, and then inside of our background section, let's do the same thing. Remove all of our extra padding here on the top and bottom. That way we can get as close to the top as we can. Now we're going to try to get the effect of having some white in the background. So the way we're going to do this, if we jump into our, our the back end here, uh, our column has a white background on the left. So let's jump into our column, go to background style, add a background color, just make it pure white. We're going to not add the background color to the column on the right. Instead, we're going to add a content box. And inside the content box, we are going to make this white. Because now what we've done is we've allowed ourselves to uh, kind of set a background color around the content box inside this column. 
and also in between it if we want it. Now let's start to set some parameters. So for our content box, let's go to layout and position. On our content box, we're going to add 40 pixels of margin rather on the right and the left and get rid of the margin on the top and the bottom. Again, we want the two to touch. And then on the inside, we're also going to make this 40 pixels. There we go. Now we've kind of set ourselves an area here and we're going to repeat the process, but this time on the left inside of the column, we're only going to repeat it on the inside. So we're going to add 40 to all sides here. So with very little effort, we've now started to define the containers, kind of like the structural skeleton of our dashboard. And it's starting to take a little bit of shape. One additional thing that we can do to give this a little bit of distinction, uh, something that I did was I added a border on the sidebar or the column here. Uh, I made this just a slightly darker gray and I made it one pixel and that allowed it to just kind of stand off the page just a little bit. So now let's start to put together a little bit of the insights. I'm going to add a two column section here for our top area and I'm going to get rid of any of the extra margin that it adds for now. We might come back and play around with it. I'm probably going to remove it from all of it. And then let's go ahead and add in below that these two columns. Let's add my courses to represent the course section we're going to add and make that our H2. Let's go ahead and add in a course list element here. We'll drop that below my courses. And what's really nice about Thrive is that they give you so many great looking uh, designs that you don't have to do a whole lot of tweaking. Um, the one that I like to use, I believe is number 18. So if I scroll down, it's in here somewhere. There it is, kind of out of order. Uh, but I drop in number 18 and it already comes pretty close to what I want, but I'm going to get rid of a lot of this extra stuff that doesn't really suit my dashboard. It would look better on like the school homepage or on like a courses page, um, but not for our needs. We don't really need it. So I'm going to click on the course list itself and on the left hand side in course list options, I'm going to edit the design using that orangish salmon color button. And I'm just going to clean this up. I'm just going to start getting rid of the things I don't want to use. So I don't want to use the, the description or the content box that came in. I don't want this extra content box below. Uh, I don't want this little uh, label on it. Um, it's already looking cleaner, uh, pretty quick and easy. Uh, I want to get rid of the hover effect. So if I click on the course item, go to hover, go to background style, delete that, keep it nice and clean. And our images also are having a little bit of a problem. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that they, they cut off, right? They're not quite right. So I'm actually going to delete them. <laughs> now, pay attention. I said I started with a template, but <laughs> I've pretty much deleted everything but the title. So, uh, you know, you do you. Uh, but open up the, the tray here and let's add a featured image called the cover image. We'll just drop that above our text. And now our course images are kind of keeping the proper aspect ratio. I'm seeing the full image here, uh, which is pretty nice. Let's add in a progress bar. So to do that, you can just drag in a progress bar feature. Super easy. And again, Thrive gives you so many different design templates here to choose from. Uh, let's just choose a simple one. I think progress bar, progress bar 21 or maybe even number one. Let's go with number one. Yeah, that's the one I used. Uh, look how easy that is. So essentially there's not a whole lot you have to do to this if you like the colors. Now let's start addressing the sidebar. So in the sidebar, let's jump back here. Uh, we have just a simple little content box uh, with some background color, some personalization. We'll go ahead and build that. And then we have our vertical menu, two vertical menus actually. Let's expand our tray and insert a content box. As always, let's delete all this extra padding that we don't need or margin. Uh, and then let's add a background color to it. So background style, let's make it our nice blue, kind of keeping our consistent theme going. And then let's go ahead and add in columns inside of this. And let's start cleaning this up a little bit. We'll go to 10 and 10, shrinks our box just a little bit, and then go to our columns and probably delete everything here. Now what we can do is we can drop in an image into the left here and like a default image. Uh, and then what you want to do is in the upper left hand corner, click on dynamic and select the source as the user image so that it changes to the image of the user. This is, I think it pulls like their gravatar or whatever is attached and then go to borders and corners and let's just drag this up to make it a perfect circle. And then let's shrink this down uh, in size so that the image isn't so big, maybe something like 50 pixels, maybe 60. And then let's take our column and let's drag it down to the point just before it starts to shrink our image and let's add some text. So for this text, we'll get rid of any extra line spacing that we have. And that's just another little tip you pick up as you use this more often. 
when you click on text inside of your theme in Thrive Theme Builder, your typography has line spacing associated with it, or maybe it doesn't. But if you're like me, I have 15 pixels of line spacing above and below each paragraph. So I get rid of those if I'm really worried about space. So now we'll add in another text element below that one. And I'll do the same thing. I'll remove the line spacing and I'll put in name and I'll bold it. And then I'll come over here in the top section here in the, what I call the kitchen sink. And you see these stacked up discs. This is our dynamic text. Instead of it just saying, welcome back name, I want to say, welcome back user data and find our WordPress first name, uncheck link to user profile. We don't want them going into WordPress and then click insert. And you could have the default be something like friend, click insert. And now it's pulled in my name. And what we can do is on our columns, go to columns and then vertical position, center it. So it lines up nicely with our image. And let's change this text back here to be something like a darker color. That's maybe a little bit too light. So you can come in here and play around with it. Uh, just find a color that you like, something a little bit darker. And then on our box here, we're going to do the same thing. So we used six pixels to round the corner of our course list. Let's use six pixels to round this as well. Let's keep everything at six pixels. So we'll go to borders and corners, six pixels, and we're going to give it a stroke here or a border on each side. And we're going to make this our darker color and click apply. And you'll notice our box still looks a little bit tall. So the culprit here is the image. Just click on the image and get rid of our extra 20 pixels on each side. And there we go. We have our welcome badge section. Now let's build our navigation. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add text in below our content box and I'll call this navigation. Now let's build our vertical navigation. I'm going to build this inside of a content box because I'm going to replicate it later for our second version. And I'm going to drag an item inside of this for text and we'll call this navigation. And we will bolt this. And in our content box, I'm gonna get rid of all the extra padding here. Uh, we don't need that, but I will leave the 20 pixels a margin just to keep it separated. Now I'm going to search for menu and we'll drag in our custom menu below our navigation. And we're going to choose standard dropdown, continue. And we're gonna create a custom one, click select template. And on the left-hand side, we're going to go to the vertical options and we're going to choose a vertical navigation. Now what's super cool is that vertical menu 12 is actually the menu that I used. So you don't have to do a whole lot to it, but let me show you how I made it look like mine. When you click into the custom menu and you go to the custom menu in the breadcrumbs under menu options, you can find menu items on the left and I get rid of these sub nav items. So I just have my nav one, nav two, nav three, etc. And on each of the items, if you click into it, you can say, I want to display instead of text only, I want to display image and text. And so it'll add an image and text to each of your menu items. And for this menu item, for example, you can click on it and replace the image uh, with like, if this were my dashboard image, I'd replace it with dashboard and I would call this one dashboard. And on the next one, I could replace this one with a course library. So we'll insert our course hat and we'll call this course library or courses. Don't remember what I called mine off the top of my head. Um, we can add in, I don't know, maybe like the community one that didn't take a lot of work. So now let's just do a little cleanup. So that looks good to me. Uh, what you can also do is come into each of your items and I'm not going to do this because this tutorial will be forever, uh, but you can come into each of your, your items and set a target URL for your different pages. You can choose whether it opens in a new tab and so on. And now let's really quickly look at how to build these two sections here. So there's actually nothing too special about this. Let's take a look again. Uh, this right here, this latest new section, um, hopefully it looks a little similar to this thing over here on the left because we're gonna build it identically. And then over here on the right, this upcoming events, I just built that by hand. But let me show you how I built this because I think it's pretty cool. So inside of here, I'm going to add another content box and I'm going to give it a border. I'm gonna do the same border treatment that I did. And then we'll just add in some text. And then all I did was add in some columns and then I just added in some text and I typed this in manually. Uh, I think like there's no magic here. You could, you could, if this were your blog, for example, you could add a post list. That would be totally fine. Come in here to your tray, search post list, drag this in and make all your blog posts. Maybe have your two latest blog posts appear here. 
Um, that's totally doable, but I did mine by hand because all of my latest news is handled inside of my pro member community. We have a news and announcement section, so I just linked to the latest big news. And to build this, we just you know gave it a title. So we just call this latest news, article one. That way I can copy that for later, drag in our button. I think it's a little small, so I'll probably expand this out to 6535, make it a small button. Let's change the words to say view. Looks pretty clean. Uh, and then we'll probably make this be full width to that size, something like that. Maybe drop it another five pixels again. 70 30 split looks good. Uh, and then inside your columns, don't forget uh, inside the columns, you can set your vertical position to line everything up nicely. It's just a common little thing that a lot of people forget they can do. Uh, and then look around inside your columns as well to find any of this extra space that you just really don't need. There you go, it's that easy. And then your button, you can just click on your button and link it wherever you wanna go under main options. So let's go ahead and build this. I probably will still put it in a content box just because it's what I do. Uh, but then I will get rid of all of the margins on it and we will add in a column set. And again, we can always duplicate things. So, so we just have to build it once and then duplicate it. Now we'll start constructing these different areas. This one is going to be built using a content box first. And this content box, we're gonna get rid of just about everything inside of it and above it. And we're going to drop in a number. So we'll say like this is 23 and we'll center it. And we'll drag this column all the way over to get it smaller because it doesn't need to be much bigger than about 20%. And then we're going to add in another content box below it. Just gonna shrink our margins and paddings uh, just because 20 pixels at this size is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we can bold our text. Uh, and you can see it's already starting to come together. Uh, once again, you'll want to remove line spacing. Um, line spacing tends to take up way too much space. Um, we can change the background color now of our content box here. So click into your text, find your content box that you're in. Background style for me, it was just the color of the theme. And then our typography, we can just make it white. So it's starting to come together and we'll give it a border as well. So we'll go to our borders and corners upper borders, and then darker. There we go. It's starting to look good. Maybe remove the bottom border. And then we need to get rid of the extra little space here. So under layout and position, just verify under your different content boxes that you don't have margin like that. And there we go. Uh, super easy. When you want to come in here and make edits, you literally just highlight the text and change it. it takes all of two seconds to make that update. And if you wanna add a little bit more, more space here, a great great place to do it is on the text. You could set a line spacing of three, I think is what I did on mine. Now, lastly, you just wanna come in and add some text. So for each event, and then you can paste in your time. Now, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna add in a button for them to RSVP. So let's just grab our button and let's go to the right of the text and that'll add in a button right here and we can say RSVP and we can change this down to like size 16 and we'll shrink this back down. When we expand it out, you'll see there's plenty of room for this to have plenty of space to grow. And in fact, I do often like to do this to give, give things a little bit more of a realistic look. You can close that sidebar and you can say, oh, okay, you know, I like, uh, that looks great to me right there. Um, so it's really easy then to come in and, and adjust your sizing. And then I can come in and duplicate these as well to kind of give you a more realistic look of what it's gonna look like. So there you go, that's how you build the dashboard. Now there's a couple other additional tweaks to this. For example, we have conditional display on various elements, pro members on my site. If I jump over here, when a pro member, a member of my community logs in, uh, they have their badge, they have a different logo at the top. The logo actually swaps out. Um, we have a couple other conditional display features happening here. So you can totally go in and customize those however you like. Now, like I mentioned, this also doubles as a login page. So don't forget under background section, you do have conditional display here in the bottom left where you can add a different display version if somebody's logged in or logged out. If you're going to do what I did and double this page as a login page and a dashboard, I have another video here on the channel where I show you exactly how to do that. So I'll go ahead and link to that as well, somewhere up in the card and down in the description as well. So hopefully that was helpful. I know that sometimes these let's build it together videos can be a little long and take a little while to drag things out, but I wanted to show you step-by-step step how easy it is and relatively quick. I mean, I don't know how long this took, what about maybe 30 minutes or so to build everything. Um, I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like, but now you do too. So replicating this uh, should be pretty easy. And if you're a member of Convology Pro, I actually put this template in the asset library so you can just go in and download it and have a leg up on getting started building your dashboard. If you have any questions about Thrive Apprentice or the dashboard that I built, feel free as always to leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.